Today I'm going to do my video showing how this works. My name is Jake, this is Canadian Cutting Edge, and what we've got here is a sharpness tester. And it's a very simple premise how it works, and I think that's the beauty of it, and the repeatability is very good. And so this will be the device that I'm going to use for the new standard of how to measure uh, the sharpness of a knife uh, after I've sharpened it a certain way up to a certain grit if different steels are more durable than others because I can test it the sharpness before and after doing certain tasks so this will be good I'm going to create a standard very much like Peter did over on the Cedric and Ada channel on his Facebook page uh, he's got pinned the different steels and how good they are in relation to one another I'm going to try to do something similar to that, not as extensive as his, I'm sure, but focusing on the budget knife market and the kind of steels that you guys who buy budget knives are going to be coming across most regularly. So let's get down to the tabletop mode and take a good look at this. Okay, so the way this system works most simply is there is a film, a wire of sorts that you cut through. Uh, before people start thinking, oh, there's some, gonna be some cheap ways to get around this, I'll just use fishing line or something. Uh, no, don't try that. <laughs> the reason is this film has a very specific thickness and it's that same thickness all the way through. Uh, yes, fishing line is made to a very high standard, but you can't be sure that it is at this kind of standard of exactly the same thickness all the time. And now I get to deal with Bandit. And now I strongly suggest that you don't replace this with any other kind of uh, wire or cordage, I guess is the technical word. Um, you know, fishing line and stuff might be tempting, but you're not going to get the exact same consistency all the way throughout. Well, at least you can't guarantee it. And then if you're cutting through a thicker piece of the wire, next time it's thinner, you're going to get different results. And so this is uh, created by the same factory under their own specs, so they know it's consistent. Basically what we have here is a scale. So we turn the scale on and it reads pressure. Now the amount of pressure that it takes to cut through that wire determines, you know, it gives it a number. That's the best thing. So gives you a reference point. It takes this much pressure with this specific blade at this time to cut through that wire. So the way it works is you put the device across on the scale and you zero it out, which is the number. Is this one zero? No. Oh, probably T for tear. There we go. That time it worked. Press the T to tear it to zero. So now it's at zero. And usually with longer knives, you would rest the tip of the knife in here and then you would slide down. But since this knife is too short, you just go straight down on that filament with even pressure, nice, slow, even pressure until it cuts through. It cut through at 305. Now, if we take a look at our scale right here that comes with the knife, it says 300 to about 350 is high-end cutlery edges and yeah this is basically the factory edge that this lark has so it's right in that range so now the way i would test this if i wanted to see how good this edge remains is i would sharpen it to 20 degrees per side all the way up to a given grit and i think i'm going to do it up to a thousand and then 10 strokes on my stropping and then i'll measure the first number and I'll measure the first number again. And if there's a fluctuation, I'll do it a third time to get a good average. So two or three times measuring it with the sharp edge, then I'm gonna give it work to do. And it's going to be the same amount of work. And I'm thinking about still using, well, I'll show it to you. You know, I will either cut through, this is my one inch wide uh, SOS scouring pad kind of thing. So cut through it. A number of times a standard number say 30 times and then test again and do a few tests just to get a good average again 
or I'll be cutting through this kind of manila rope. Again, same number of cuts or of each time that I test it. And then I have to cut through this filament at the same place on the knife that I cut through the rope. Whatever it's going to be, that's how I'm going to get my new standard numbers. And that's how I'm going to get that listed. And after a while, I'll be able to tell you on the screen and my regular viewers, you'll be able to you know, follow along and know how good an edge is from the factory and how good I can create it and how good it keeps its edge. I will not do that test for every single knife I review. What I'm going to be reviewing is the different types of steel. So if I've got a lot of knives that are, you know, the Ganzo 440C, I'm not going to do every single one. I'll test a few of them and then that'll give me my numbers. Uh, just like uh, HX Outdoors D2. Well, I'm going to assume that every time HX Outdoors uses D2, it's going to be basically the same steel. And so I'll measure that. So that's how I'm going to be doing this test, and that's how I'm going to be getting the numbers for the screen. So thanks for watching this. Sharp, uh, it wasn't Sharp, it was Bess, B-E-S-S -S, trademark. Uh, they sold this to me at a discount because I am a reviewer. So yes, I bought this. I just got a little bit better price than the average citizen would get. And thank you very much to Best for selling this to me. And I'm going to do my best to give very good professional results for all of you so that you can trust and know what you're going to be getting when you buy a knife that I have reviewed. So thanks for watching this. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, guys, always cut towards your chum and not your thumb.